Welcome to this video on mental multiplication, strategies, and some awesome facts. Okay guys, this is a recap video of some of the stuff we've already been working on. So, maybe an idea to have a watch and use it to help us complete the booklet. Okay, let's just start and remind ourselves what a multiple is. Alright, now if you remember, multiple sounds like multiplication. So if I'm looking for the multiples of seven, what I'm really doing is writing down the seven times table. So multiple seven and 14 and 21 and 28 and 35 and so it goes on. And what about the multiples of five, five, 10, 15, 20 and 25 and so they go on. So multiple means multiply, right? Or multiplication. So where is the power? Where's the excitement of multiplication? Well, earlier we were looking at the idea of, well, how do you multiply a number by eight? If I had to do 15 times by eight, for example, what are the ways I could do it? Well, we could sit there and strain and go 15 times, 15 and 15 is 30, 30 and 15 is 45, but we kept saying, or we were looking at the idea that, and I know that uh, some of my students are going to love this, but it's like, we look at the idea of double, and double, and double it again. Alright, so double it, double it, and double it again. So why? Why would 15 times 8 be the same as double it, and double it, and double it again? Well, if we think about the number 8, that is the same as 15 times, well 8 can be become 2 times 4. Why? because 2 times 4 is exactly the same as 8. But hold on, I know that 4 can be split up into 2 times 2. And look at that. Wow, that's pretty cool. 15 times by 2, times by 2, and times by 2. Or, as I want to say one more time, what I do is I take the 15, I double it, I double it, I double it again. So 15 and doubled is 30. Double it again gives me 60, double it again gives me 120, and there we go. How cool is that? Multiplying by 8, I double it, double it, and double it again. All right? Ah, can we use that with other type of rules? Maybe. Let's have a look. What about 15 times 6? Well, we like to double things. We can double things, and I suppose at a push, we can probably times by 3. But if you think about it, what can I change the 6 into? How can I rewrite that into something easier? Well, that's the same as 2 times 3. So 15 is the same as 15, double it, and then take the answer and times that by 3. So let me think. 15 times 2 is 30, and 30 times 3 is 90. So I know that 15 times 6 is 90. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Um, can we use this in another way? Yeah, what about 14 times 21, for example? Wow, that's tough. How do we do 14 times 21? Well, 14 is the same as 7 times 2 times 21. Now, that might look difficult, but the great thing about multiplication is, well, ask yourself this question. What is 1 times 2? We all know it's 2. And so what is 2 times 1? Uh, it's also 2. Okay, simple example. What about this one? What is 1 times 2 times 3? Uh, well, hopefully you'll know it's 6. So what is 3 times 2 times 1? Uh, 6. And what is 2 times 3 times 1? Uh, 6. And what is 1 times 3 times 2? Uh, 6. Hopefully, by now, what we've noticed is that it doesn't matter which order the numbers come in, if they all have multiplication signs between them, the answer comes up to be the same. So I can now rewrite 7 times 2 times 21 as 21 times 7 times 2. Now, okay, that's a little tough, but let's think 7 times 21 is 147, and I can double that to give me 294. Whoa, that's pretty cool. So I can break numbers up to allow me to do this easier. So that was one of the multiplication facts we were learning earlier. 
about multiples. Another strategy we were looking at was the idea of how do I work out 15 times 18? Well, I love this idea. This is, I just think something is awesome. It's like, ah, well, what we do is we use the idea of doubling and halving. Now, in maths, when you times by two, you can undo it by dividing by two. Those things are thought of as opposite operations. So if I have the number seven, and I times it by two, I get 14. And if I divide that by two, I get seven. So the times by two and divide by two actually sort of cancel each other out. They don't change my original answer. Ah, so what we were talking about today was what, how can I make this easier using the idea of doubling and halving? Well, what we double, the other one, we halve. So let's think about 15. I'm going to double that number to give me 30, and I'm now going to half 18 to give me 9. I've not changed the sum, because although I've times 1 by 2 and divided 1 by 2, these effectively cancel out. They, they undo each other, so my original sum will still give me the same answer. Well, I can do 30 times 9, because if you remember, that's the same as 3 times 9 times 10. Ooh, what is 3 times 9? Uh, 9, 18, 27. So that's the same as 27, which if I multiply by 10, remember, you do not bang a zero on the end. You do not just put a naught on. It doesn't work like that. And to the disgust of probably many primary teachers around the country, I'm going to remind you that 27 is the same as 27 with a decimal point. When we multiply by 10, how many places do I move the decimal point? I move it one, and I move it one place that way. So remember it go, <coughs> the decimal point moves to there, and what does it jump over? Well, you can't see nothing there because there is a nothing there. So that decimal point disappears, and what do we have? We have, yep, 270. So I now know my answer to 15 times 18 is 270. One number doubled and one number halved. I think that's awesome, all right? It's brilliant, but it has a restriction or sometimes it's not going to work. And one of the examples we looked at was, well, 13 times 13. Well, I could double this, that will make life easier, to 26, but can I halve 13? Uh, I'm going to get 6.5. And I don't know about you, but uh -uh, that doesn't make my life any easier. All right? What about 30 times 18? All right? This number here is even. This number here is even. Uh, well, let's think about it. 30, I can double. It becomes 60 times uh, 9, because we're going to half that one. I can do 60 times 9, because that's the same as 6 times 9 times 10, which is 540. Yay, so this works pretty good. All right, so that's an odd number, and that's an odd number. That doesn't seem to work very well. An even number and an even number, that seems to be pretty good. What about 15 times eight, for example? Oh, well, that's an odd number. That's an even number. Let's see what happens. Well, the 15, let's double that, is gonna give me 30. I'm gonna half the eight is gonna give me four, and that's easy enough to do. 120, right? So these seem to work quite well, unless both of the numbers are odd. We've already talked about multiplying numbers by 10, and so just what happens if we do uh, 27 times 10? Remember, that is the same as 27 with a decimal point after it. When you times by 10, you move your decimal point one way that way. Now, some teachers teach it, that what you're actually doing is you're moving the numbers. I don't like that. I think it looks nicer and works just as well if we bounce decimals, because decimals are born to bounce. And so the dot goes So my decimal point is there, and it's like, well, hold on a minute, that's not jumped over anything. There's nothing there. Absolutely, there is nothing there. So 27 times 10 becomes 270 with the decimal point after, but we know that we don't need to write that. So 27 times 10 is 270. 
Now you're thinking, but I can put a zero on the end. I, I can, I can, I can just bang a zero on the end. Uh -uh. Just remember, if I have 0 0.4 times 10, if I was just to go, ah, oh, well, I'm just going to put a zero on the end, I'm going to end up with 0 0.40. And we all know that any zeros at the end of a decimal number disappear. We don't need to write them. So what you've just proved is by doing the bang a naught on the end, yeah, you've decided that 0 0.4 times 10 is 0 0.4. I don't think so. That doesn't work. It does if you do the bouncing decimals though. So I have 0 0.4 times 10. 0 0.4, the decimal point moves one place to the right. Let's see. I have the zero, I have the four, and I've got the decimal point at the end. Well, again, we've been doing way too many of the idea that, well, a number that has a decimal point on the end, we don't need to write it. There is the four. The number zero at the beginning of numbers doesn't get read neither. And so my answer is four. And so 0 0.4 times 10 is actually four. That is the right answer. This is rubbish. Do not just put zeros on the ends of numbers. It makes me very nervous. Some of the numbers get really, really complicated. So let's look at 13 times 25. These are both odd numbers. Maybe in this situation, our bump up and bump down, or double and half, isn't going to work because they're both odds. So is there another way we can do this? Yes. In America, they have coins that are called quarters which are 25 cents, and they know over there that there are four quarters in a dollar. So I like the number 25. It's an awesome number in which to be able to multiply. 13, not so nice, and it's normally thought of as an unlucky number. Well, not for us today, because we can think of 13 as the number of 10 and 3. Think of your place value. Think of your expanded notation. All right, 13 is the same as 10 plus 3. We know that. So here is my 10, and here is my 3. So rather than think of 13 times 25, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of 10 times 25 and 3 times 25. Well, what is 10 times 25? Uh, oh, hold on. I know how to do this. 25 times 10, 250. And 3 times 25 is 75. And so what do I do? Well, 10 plus 3 is 13. So 250 plus 75 must give me the right answer, and it actually does. So 250 plus 75 gives me 5 to 325. 325, yay, there is my answer. Ooh, this looks really difficult. No, it's not, and you can do difficult sums with this as well. So let's think about uh, 73 times 9. Well, 73 is the same as 70 plus 3. So that's going to be 73, and we'll times it by 9. 70 times 9. Well, hold on a moment. 7 times 9 is 63, so that must be 630. 3 times 9, 9, 18, 27. Add them together, 657. Wow, I can do all this stuff in my head now, 657. Now, doing it in your head, as I've just said, takes practice. It's not something you learn overnight. The more you do it, the better you get. First time I got in a car, was I an excellent driver? Well, actually, yes, I was. No, I wasn't. I had to practice, and the more I did, the better I got. All right? So that was the stuff we were dealing with today. All right? I'm going to do another video now dealing with a little bit more stuff, some different strategies, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Keep working hard. Well done so far.